everybody, Spartan here from SpartanTrading.com. I want to hit you guys with a trade review video this week. And in this video, I want to talk about two low floats that ran today, which today is, if you want to know, the uh, Wednesday, the 16th of June. And the two low floats that I'm going to be talking about today are Orf and Sino, or sorry, Vino. So um, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, I did talk about both on Twitter when they started to run. And I did guide them on Twitter in regards to where the next price tar targets are, when I thought they were done, etc. in regards to when they were running, in my opinion. So at Spartan Trading on Twitter, if you don't follow me, um, I do give out a lot of free ideas and things like that. So can certainly help you there. But anyways, let's talk about ORF. So ORF, guys, uh, basically, I noticed that this thing was starting to push up um, on the daily. Uh, right out the gate, there was a little bit of a flag that was set up on the daily. Started to reclaim EMA support. When I noticed that, I decided to take a position in the morning, which I did. Uh, you know, you can obviously see it right here on the first little pop. So I took that first position around 11.38. Um, it started to move to the upside, break that range to the upside. So I started to add into it on that push. Sold a little bit on the move, added a little bit more on 11.87 when I saw the volume was real. Big volume was coming in to the upside. So 11.35 sold some at 11, uh, 13.71. And this is just the concept again of trading around a core position where I'm keeping my full size um, around here and I'm gonna be adding and taking pieces off as it moves to the upside. So 11.36, whatever in, sold some at 11.60, bought a little bit more 11.87, sold some at 13.71. So two and a half points, whatever you wanna call it, $2.40. Bought some more at 15.94, um, sold some at 17. Bought some more at 19, sold some at 21, 22, um, 21 again, bought a little bit more, sold some at 23. And by the way, this is the first trade. So this is the first trade up to 13.02. I exited the entire position at 22.18. Um, so effectively a 10 point trade. It started to flag break to the upside or started to move and flag on the upside. L2 was starting to go bid as well. So I decided to get back into the trade um, on that push back into the range resistance. Got into the trade at the uh, 2171 spot, sold on the pop into the 2335, um, 2326, sorry, 22, uh, oh, sorry, 2317, sold some there. And then I bought more at 2335, 2326. It ended up starting to pull back. So what I did is I exited that entire position, flipped it short, covered some uh, below a point, 2089, 2093. Oh, sorry, 2089. I grabbed some long. I um, accidentally tried to short some more and I was just in the long mode. Grabbed some at 2093, exited it at 2060, grabbed some more short at 2030, covered some at 1930s, 1952, 1926, 1927. Um, you can see I bought some at the end of the day and then I sold the last piece at 2081. So, you know, basically was scalping for a point here, point there after that 10 point move in the morning. Uh, the whole idea and the whole concept by, you know, between getting in and out of this was looking at the volume, seeing if volume's increasing, if it's increasing and holding up, EMA support's holding, then I want to stay in the position long, as well as using the L2 to cycle in and out of the position. Um, lastly, you know, in order to get targets on this thing that's had this big of a run, what do you do? You use Fibonacci, right? So there's nothing on the, uh, on the actual stock in, or on the actual chart on the daily in regards to support and resistance because it did have a run up to 78 bucks so as it was breaking back above that what 14 15 level you didn't really have any um, support or resistance you could use so simply just using a fibonacci um i'm not sure how to do it on this platform i'll show you on my other one simply just drawing a fibonacci extension on the chart will allow you to figure out where potentially it can retrace to so in this case, from bottom to top, and then I was just looking at those levels, 2059, um, so on and so forth, 3281. I had a little bit, little bit different, uh, 32, like 77, but whatever. That's uh, essentially what I was using after there was no more support and resistance on the daily to go off of. So pretty simple trade there, um, not a uh, you know really complicated move or anything like that, but definitely did pay. So. That was a good one. Another one was Vino, which it's a similar kind of concept, except you know we're just looking at volume coming in. So volume coming in on the, the stock at the beginning of the day, taking some, you know, selling it at the pops, um, volume coming back in, and then basically buying um, into the support and waiting. So waited, 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 sold some on that first little pop, 
into the uh, 598 spot. It failed to get above that double top. So ended up exiting most of the position. I had a little bit of a piece on just to keep an eye on it. And then obviously it ended up starting to push again. And let's actually go to a uh, five minute chart. Started to push again, sold a little bit, bought some more, bought some more, basically was selling and buying into the pop. And then obviously went all the way towards nine bucks. So effectively it was like a, you know, five bucks to $9 trade, eight, let's call it eight bucks, 850, whatever it is. So three points um, basically to the upside there, three points and change, three and a half points. Good little trade. We'll see what happens with this thing tomorrow. Maybe get a little bit more of a push, but um, you know, same thing, you know, using the L2, using the volume, another name that we, you know, got it in chat as well as uh, on Twitter. But uh, effectively, you know, look at the daily chart. You see the next support and resistance levels. Look at the chart pattern. It was a flag break to the upside with volume behind it. And that's pretty much it. So two uh, low float trades, guys. Again, not super complicated. I think the best example here is that ORF. Um, because it was a pretty clean move to the upside, all about the volume, and it's easy to go back and look at the uh, increasing volume. You can, you know, obviously see it. Um, you can see why I had the conviction for it to push further and further to the upside, and the fact that it was a former runner that went to 78 bucks like a couple days ago. Obviously, if it does end up again pushing to the upside, I think you can get a little bit of a retrace. So, nice little move there. We'll see what happens with this tomorrow. It's again another name to keep an eye on. Of course, you'll be watching this tomorrow, so. Watch this on, uh, you can look at it on you know Friday as well. There may be a, a short opportunity, who knows. Anyways, that's it, guys. All I want to talk about um, today. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to go to spartantrading.com, contact us, or you can email spartan at spartantrading.com. Happy to help. Otherwise, you can ask some questions in the, uh, the comments on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you guys next week.